Hey everybody, Daniel from Space Dock here, and Alistair from Space Dock. And Alistair from Space Dock as well. And we're here to look at what might be the T-85 X-Wing, which has just shown up in the um, Star Wars Resistance extended sneak peek that was dropped on the Star Wars channel. Mm -hmm. uh, I must say that we don't know for certain that this is the T-85, but the T-85 has long been hyped since the book um, Before the Awakening, which was released when... Uh, I was going to say, could you, could you explain to me quickly why people think this is the T-85 and not, say, the T-80 or T-90 or any other T... So basically, the, um, the, there was a, a paperback novel called Before the Awakening that was released alongside The Force Awakens, mm -hmm. and it was three stories all set immediately before the film. It was one about Rey, one about Finn, and one about Poe. So it was like Finn uh, on the Star Destroyer as a, as a, assault, as a stormtrooper, and Rey uh, in the desert on Jakku. And Poe, uh, it was Poe's story was how he defected to the Resistance from the New Republic. Okay. And, and he basically absconds with a bunch of fighters. And, and he is a, a New Republic fighter squadron commander, and they fly T-85 X-Wings, which are the mainstay starfighter of the New Republic at this point. Okay. Whereas the T-70 is super old, and that's the one that they palm off to the Resistance. So this is the mainstay one that everyone yeah. in the Resistance is currently using. Okay, cool. This is the New Republic's mainstay fighter. We think this might not be the T-85 X-Wing, but um, no other modern or future X-Wing iteration has been foreshadowed, whereas the T-85 has. So this is probably that. Okay. This is the um, the general look. Um, this is the best shot we get of it in the trailer. And immediately, I think you'll notice the uh, S-foils extend wider than uh, is standard for mm. the T-70. And also, we have a slightly different nose shape. It's kind of like an Alcon 70 style kind of prow going it, on. Yeah, there. it looks like... It kind of looks like a shark face or something, especially with the two little eyes there. It looks like it's got gills at the front, it's got two yeah. little eyes or something. It looks quite face-like. I must say, I um, I like the nose a lot on this. It's uh, Of all the changes between the T-70 and this, the nose is my favourite change. Right, okay. Like, uh, I think that looks pretty cool. So what's going on with the uh, the, the, the thing in front of the wing? Because those are supposed to be intakes, right? What the wings are attached to. Um, but they don't look like they're intakes at all. The T-70 is quite interesting because it's got like... It, it is an intake. Yeah, they're, like, as, they're like split down the middle. I should point out that uh, if, make... you, if you have an actual air intake and you split it in half, it will not work. So yeah, that, the, that always the, seemed weird that, that's to not, me. That's not what these are. If you look at the um, if you look at the Star Wars cross section book, it says that the intakes are for, somehow they're like gyroscopes for stabilization. Right. Uh, they just look like intakes. I don't know. I was always under the impression that it was supposed to like take in uh, like hydrogen sp or something. Space particles. For, no, and... it, it, according to the TFA cross section book, it's a stabilization sort of gyroscope thing. Mm. Again, that sounds like something that would not lend itself well to being split in half. But fun, what, fun of a factoid: what that that space is not actually a vacuum, but is instead made up of what is known <laughs> as the interstellar medium. Mm. I should say. To preface this, I love the T-70. I think the T-70 is, like, the perfect evolution of the X-Wing. Mm. Everything was perfect. Like, they, they, the artist that had to design that was given a nightmare task to uh, to take the most legendary ship of Follow up something ever. as iconic as the X-Wing. And, and I think they nailed it. I love the T-70. It's gorgeous. It's, the it's, scissor wing thing is brilliant. It's it's very similar beside the scissor wing thing and also, like, the split supposedly intake. Yeah. But other than that, it's... it's and it's kind of a, a lighter and sleeker and yeah. it's a little bit stretched and it just looks less bulky. I really love it. This is definitely a bigger step in a uh, different direction. Yeah. Now, interestingly, the, the T-85 here has taken the strange step of... Making it bulkier, which is like seems to be uh, an odd choice because normally when you want to convey that something is newer and more futuristic, mm. you cut it down and make it sleeker to imply that the technology is now smaller and more compartmentalized. But this has like a, a big cluster of four engines. In I was going to say, so probably one of the reasons that it's bulkier is because it seems like it's got an extra set of four engines at the back yeah. there. So, um, so the, it, I must say, I'm not a huge fan of the four yellow engines at all, really. Someone has pointed out in the chat that the wings are slightly swept, which you can probably see yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, that's quite like nice. I like Forward that. leading slightly. Like uh, that. Also, the, the, the guns uh, on the really wing tips, stubby. They're quite stubby. Interesting they're, they're choice. Smaller. Uh, I'm not sure I like that much. Uh, what did I say earlier? They look like four biro pens slapped to the end mm -hmm. of the wings. This design, it has. Um, elements that I really like and elements that I don't. It's it's um, in some way there are, there are areas of this that I prefer to the T seventy even, like the um, like the nose and the swept wings. That do you know what this looks like? This looks like 
Uh, it could be a storage bay of some kind. Or a torpedo tube. Yeah, yeah, like that would like open up and either be... I don't know, that's, that's quite big for a torpedo tube, do you tube, think it's you possible? Because I'm just thinking... Like, look at the size of the droid and look how big this yeah. person is here. You could fit a lot of stuff in this space here. But that's where the storage bays that are bomb. on the T-65. Okay. We see Luke getting his, his survival equipment out of it in Empire Strikes Back. Right. But um, just to throw it out there, do you think it's possible because the... Um, that aft section with the four engines on it is more similar in shape to the aft fuselage of the T-65. Like, do you think it's possible that this is actually older than the T-70? And is... Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing would, probably not. Why would it be called the T-85? We don't, we don't know. This is not necessarily the T-85. Actually. Oh, so you're always saying this could be the, the T-67 or something. Something like that. But I mean, I should, I should say that... Uh, that seems unlikely. I would be willing to bet this is the T-85. The, yeah. uh, that's the one that they've uh, foreshadowed... Um, and also, that nose looks like an attempt to make it seem more new, like the uh, like it's more sort of aquatic and like. It know. does look very aquatic. Yeah. yeah, I really love the paint scheme on this. It's really nice. Yeah, it's nice to break it up from the standard. Everything's grey apart from a couple of stripes which represent the squadron that they're in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. this is very nice. Um, so yeah, I, I feel like that's probably enough on the new X wing. But I kind of want to talk about this next frame. So this is. This okay. looks like a new Inquisitor TIE Fighter. It seems to be a hybrid of the V1 Inquisitorial TIE Fighter and the TIE Interceptor. Yeah. And then it has those uh, inlets. The, the, yeah. But it's also um, red, which is kind of interesting. Well, that's the uh, Imperial Royal Guard colours, right? Yeah. So you do get TIE Interceptors of those colours if they're like... Although we should point out this is the First Order, so uh, it could be anything. Uh, uh, frankly, I don't see any reason to assume that they wouldn't use the same... Because we know they've got yeah. uh, Royal Guards as well from The Last Jedi. Oh, the Praetorians. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So this could be like a pra Praetorian TIE fighter. Possibly, yeah. Now, there's the red pilot chap, by the way. If there's already a red pilot, it's probably not going to be Praetorian? No? no, I'm going to assume it's some kind of fighter. It's kind of like elite pilot, yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Um, I've, I've got to be honest. I don't really like any of the new... Like, the, these racing ships... Well, the racing ships. Like, there's like five unique racing ships, and they seem to be like the star designs of the series. Like, the, there was a video before this mm -hmm. where they were, like, showing off all the racing ships and giving them all their own fact files, and I, I don't really care for any of them, to be honest. A lot of them seem quite blocky and, like, headhuntery. Yeah, some of these uh, villain ships look way better, I think. But that's okay. I like that red and white one a bit. Uh, it's all right. The, uh, this looks like a really cut down Jedi Starfighter or no, something. No, that's a that's a tie something. The, the, there's one of the characters is a an ex Imperial guy. Oh, okay. And he's like uh, he's like got this stripped down modified Tie Fighter, which oh. is that. See, there it is. That's okay. I mean, it's a bit flat. I think that's an SF, the the, the one that's all black in in the back middle. The oh, the SF has that's got a three hundred and sixty gun. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's got it's got an antenna, and usually oh, has like yeah, yeah. red uh, along the side of it. But you know, that's just a paint job. So this is a pretty nice uh, skybox in the background. Yeah, it's like nice the, tra the trailing off green got nebula. A conveniently placed nebula. Yeah, because nebulas are everywhere in space. They're and everywhere. They're Eleven feet across. You can't go down to the corner shop without popping yeah, into three nebulas. nebulas. <laughs> uh, mm. I wonder in what context we will see them. The uh, the T eighty five. I did suggest earlier. Somebody was asking why. There are two of them with S foils closed going away, and one of them with S foils open coming towards the lens. Yeah, I was I was wondering if uh, potentially this is our protagonist like breaking off from a training exercise to attack fighters or something. Like he gets all. Oh, this is going to be a scene where he has to do something other than race. Yeah, well, maybe they all get. It looks like to pull it looks out. like all of the racing ships have guns anyway. Yeah, seemingly. Like, I'm curious to see how these fighters get involved in the story. Really, the resistance have like a running theme of not having access to modern fighters. Like, uh, they, they don't have these in The Force Awakens or The Last Jedi. They're using T-70s, which are, like, 30 years old. Mm. So if the Resistance, as an organization, has these in this series, then they've got to lose them somehow. Otherwise, they, they'd be using them. In, uh... It'll probably be, like, actual Resistance involvement. That's the point. Of, that's kind of the point of the show, right, is to see what's, what the hell's going on with the Resistance. The New Republic, you mean. The New Republic, sorry. Yeah. Um, in but the context... we, we do see that our protagonist character is flying this in this trailer. Oh, right, okay. There's a shot in a second oh, of him it, in the is cockpit. Is that you see him in the cockpit? Yeah. So he, he's flying a New, this, a new this Republic could fighter. Be, this is probably like prior to the event of the show then. Yeah. Like this is what he's doing before he ends up getting assigned. Like he's a cadet in the New Republic Navy or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he gets scooped up and by the he resistance. And then he gets fired for flying backwards compared to the squadron <laughs> the entire time. <laughs> and yeah. they tell you you're a loose cannon. 
you gotta, you gotta straighten up and fly around. How much money do you think Fantasy Flight will milk out of this? All the money. Oh my god, as much <laughs> as they can. Uh, I think these T-85s were deliberately designed to look bureaucratic to contrast with the more heroic T-70s to establish that New Republic resistance dichotomy. Oh, that's interesting. That does make a lot of sense. That like, does make uh, sense. Like strapping they, 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 the extra engines on. These, these look like... Um, do you know what these look like? Police vehicles mm. more than anything else you know these look like they're, they're for like more controlled like i guess space urban environments uh, well i mean if you're trying to sell the theme that the new republic is like um is like sort of crushed under its own weight with bureaucracy and, and over complication and all that then these like extra engines on the middle bit make a lot of sense it's the same kind of theming that we used for the leonidas class in force recon yeah where it's like they put on more stuff but it didn't we make can, it we can, we can put more engines on this so we're going to like we've got more technology now so we're going to make this the flashiest most over the top fighter possible Yeah. and then as a result it's probably harder to fly and less reliable more things to break down the older X-Wing have also have that big belly under the craft from Phoenix Fire the T-70 uh, the, the T-70 has um, a revolver torpedo tube there we were like, talking about this so does it go out as much because i this looks larger to me and i think it also that, has this yeah this what looks like a door so this to me seems like it's going to be like a storage space the ta or whatever this is seems to be quite a lot uh deeper than a t70 yeah yeah it does and uh that space what you're indicating there as being a cargo bay that space on the t70 is the torpedo tube this the single revolving torpedo tube mm. Uh, so maybe this is kind of heavier and maybe it has two torpedo tubes or something else or it could just be a cargo bag this this could be like a heavy fighter or something like that it would be interesting to know whether we will also see new uh, other New Republic ships like maybe a B-Wing or something I would quite like uh, to have seen more new iterations of old designs mixed in with the new designs which is interesting because that's like the opposite complaint that I had from The Last Jedi mm. like The Last Jedi every single new ship is a new version of an old ship like they have a new Nebulon B and they have a new um, uh, they have the, they have the bombers they, they have the new. bombers yeah that's fair but the um, you just complain about all the new ones that they did a minute ago you were saying how you I know, like that's what I'm saying. Star Destroyers I have or whatever the, else I have the opposite to... complaint here because here we've got a lot of new ships which is good but I'd like them to have sprinkled maybe a, a Mark II B-Wing or some kind of new Y-Wing or something in there as well. That would have been nice. But yeah, um, overall, I think this has some features that I like a lot. The nose is very nice. The um, tapered wings are very nice. I like the paint job a lot. Uh, I'm glad to have this ship added to the roster. But uh, I must say I'm not a massive fan of the, the increased bulkiness, the stubby guns, or the four yellow engines on the middle. I'm not a massive fan of the nose. No, you don't like the nose. I, a, I mean, look at it. It looks like gills. It looks like a face. It looks like a face with two sad faces on it. So you don't like the Arc One Seventies nose either, do you? I don't like the Arc One Seventies nose. I don't. I'm not just fan of the Arc One Seventy in general. See, I love that kind of proud nose thing. Well, that's pretty much all there is to say about the new T eighty five X wing and its uh, compatriots in this trailer. Yeah, let us know what you think down in the comments below, whether you like it or not. I'm, yep. sure, I'm sure everyone's going to do did that. It, uh, did it fill your expectations for what's been built up for the T-85, if indeed this is the T-85? Let us know in the comments below. And thanks for joining us. Yeah, we'll see, see you, you next time. time. This is Daniel from Space Dock, signing off. Thank you for watching Space Dock. Please remember to like, subscribe and share for more science fiction spacecraft summaries. If you enjoy the channel, why not consider pledging your support on Patreon? For just $1 a month, you'll be able to access the Space Dock schedule to see what's coming up.